I think it's fair to say that I'm not exactly the world's biggest fan of the inner tube, but according to a particular GMBN Tech viewer, 85% of mountain bikers still use them. So today, as you can see, I'm going back to using inner tubes. I mean, how bad can they be? I don't know whether to be disappointed or pleased. I just rode this upper section. I think it's wibbly wobbly, I'm gonna say. Uh, only because we tested on this recently with the gearbox bike. And I knew it was gonna be choppy enough on a little travel bike just when pedaling through. And I felt it rimming out like constantly. And even just on these tiny little hits through here, rim banging on there, I haven't lost any pressure. 28 PSI I think I put in and 26 on the front. Huh. Is it strange that I feel delighted I got a puncture? But I shouldn't do really because you will always end up getting punctures with any shoes at a really bad place on the ride where you've got the most amount of mud or even worse, cow sh dog sh on your tyres. Happened to me the other day. Literally rode for a cow got a puncture. But, uh, right, let's get this one changed, shall we? Ah, the snake bite, also known as the pinch puncture. This occurs, um, it can occur with inner tubes or with tubeless, to be fair. A bit harder with tubeless because you have to split the tyre, but uh, essentially when you hit something like a sharp edged rock and it squashes the tyre, bang, against the, the rim, and then the inner tube is squashed in there, and characteristically you'll get two, two holes, basically, or two slashes, kind of like a snake bite would look. Uh, absolute pain because sometimes they get so big you can't even fix them. Um, but if you can, you should always patch up your inner tubes because uh, you want to try and reuse this stuff, don't you? You don't want to make unnecessary waste. So that is your classic pinch puncher, aka snake bite. That one is repairable because the holes are fairly small, but sometimes they can be three or four times as long as that. <laughs> Okay, so let's look at some of the good stuff as well as some of the bad stuff about inner tubes because despite what I've always said, they're not all bad. There are some good features about inner tubes. So let's start right there with the pros. And first up, they're dirt cheap. You can get inner tubes anywhere as well. Any bike shop in the world, you can get an inner tube that's gonna fit your bike. Um, that makes them a good thing. Also, having an inner tube is an absolute necessity. Regardless of running inner tubes or running tubeless, you're still gonna need to carry one of these as a spare. So as much as a diehard tubeless user you might be, like myself, I still end up carrying one of these with me. And it's the same for EWS racers. They always carry a spare tube with them. Now there's something very cool about a tube in the fact that you can rescue someone. A fellow mountain biker that's suffered a puncture, hasn't got a tube, if you throw him an inner tube. Thanks, man. You are instantly hero of the day. You've literally saved the day. And that's a great feeling. Inner tubes are really easy to fix as well. Uh, that is unless you sort of ruin the valve or anything like that, but a standard puncture, even a snake bite puncture can be fairly easy to fix. Uh, you can do that with instant patches, which literally you clean up the patch on the tube with like some isopropyl alcohol and whack it on, put it back in your bike and good to go. Or the old school method that I actually favor using the old school one, vulcanizing solution and feather edge patches because once you've patched them up, the tube literally is as good as new. And it's been known to run tubes with, I don't know, like 20 or 30 of those patches that have never caused problems. So fixing in the tubes, 
not a problem. When you get a puncture with an inner tube, there's no mess. Unlike tubeless, where you split a tire, you smash your rim to pieces, whatever it is, you end up with tire sealant everywhere. Uh, even from installation, if you get that wrong, tire sealant all up your legs, all up the wall, or wherever you live, you won't be getting that with inner tubes. Now, there is a huge positive thing with inner tubes. It's actually not referenced that much. Now, slope style riders are a good example of this. They will run extremely high tire pressures because of the nature of the way they land, the way they carve into lips and stuff, uh, they would just be tearing tires off. Now, tubeless tires will always have a maximum tire pressure and you shouldn't exceed that because you risk actually damaging a tire or ripping it clean off the rim uh, because of the fact the rim is not designed to withhold those pressures. So with an inner tube, you can go much, much higher in tire pressure uh, in a way that it's not going to affect the grip of the tire on the rim, that sort of bead and bead lock sort of interface there. Uh, good system if you want to run high pressure. And the last one, one size fits all. A 29 inch inner tube with a Presta valve is all you need to carry because you can fit those in 27 and a half inch wheels, you can fit them in 29, you can even stuff them in 26s and I've put one in a 24 before. That is the inner tube you want to be carrying as a spare because it will fit anything. Okay, so now for the bad stuff. Well, firstly, they're additional weight, they can be heavy. So even a basic inner tube is additional rotating weight in your wheels. So your wheels are gonna weigh more when you're running inner tubes than when you're not running inner tubes. Uh, and if you're running heavy duty tubes like downhill ones, uh, they can be up to like 1.5 millimeters thick with rubber to protect against pinch punctures and the like. Uh, you're talking like 450 to 500 grams for one of those bad boys. So that's nearly the weight of a cross country tire. So that's a serious amount of weight to be lugging around in your tires. Thorns. Yeah, well, thorns are really the Achilles heel of the inner tube, and actually that is where I've noticed the difference between tubeless and not. Um, more than anything, I'd kind of forgotten. I went back to riding inner tubes for a few rides recently before making this video, just to sort of remind myself, and I punctured on all of those rides. Um, so two rides was with thorns, one ride actually was a pinch puncture. But the ones with thorns, I'd just completely forgotten because what happens is it doesn't go down straight away. It will go flat at a really inconvenient time on your ride when you've ridden for all sorts of animal feces and stuff. And then you end up having to fix it like I did twice on rides recently. And it bugs the hell out of me still. Thorns really are a pain in the ass. You could argue they're bad for the environment. Now, without going on a massive green tip here, uh, I'm just talking about the fact it's additional rubber. Now, by running tubeless, you don't need them. So you could argue that in the tubes, uh, you don't really need them. There's a lot of these things in production and they're made from butyl, technically a single use rubber. Uh, you can't really recycle it that well, you can repurpose it. Um, whereas a lot of people say, oh yeah, tubeless solution is bad, but it tends to be made from more natural rubber products like latex. Uh, and as a result, it can biodegrade in a more harmless way. Pinch punches, yes. Snake bikes, pinch punctures, rim outs, whatever you want to call them. You end up splitting the inner tube uh, between the rim, almost like a cookie cutter effect. Um, and then you're out of action. You've got two whacking grey holes in your inner tube that you've got to fix. Sometimes you can do worse and really split the inner tube along the seams. They're an absolute pain and they always happen when you least expect it. Some inner tubes like these ones have rubbish valves. Uh, if you're going to use an inner tube, make sure you get one that has a replaceable valve core. Uh, because if you damage that, the tube is basically bin fodder straight away. So not only is it a single use item, but it's rendered useless by the fact that the simple valve is broken. So when you buy an inner tube, do everyone a favor and buy one with a replaceable valve core. Uh, that way you can keep it in circulation for much longer. Sometimes seating tires with inner tubes. In fact, just the whole process of putting inner tubes on can be a pain. They can be very easy to split if you're using tie levers, for example, if you've got a tight tire, I'm sure a few of you have split inner tubes over the years. I've done loads and cursed about it in doing that. But also, sometimes it's nearly impossible to seat the tire correctly on the rim. Now, when you're doing this with tubeless, the tire naturally fills that void as it pops out to become tubeless. But when you set up with an inner tube, you're just expanding a tube inside that tire and it doesn't always push the actual beads into the sort of the bead lock of the rim. And what you end up with is a wobble on your tire because the tire is not seated correctly. Now, if you're at home, you can get around this by using some warm soapy water that helps the tire slide into place. But if you're out on the trail and you get puncture and you fix it like I have done today, and it just will not seat. I took it up to about 45 PSI and it still wouldn't seat, so I'm left with a tire bobbling around all over the place. Ugh. 
so annoying. And finally, and probably most irritatingly, is the fact that inner tubes littering in the woods, or anywhere for that matter, could liken us to dog walkers hanging their bags of dog poo uh, in their little carrier bags from trees. I'm sure you've all seen them. And I hate it because of fact it just associates mountain bikers with being litterers and we're not and we shouldn't be. Always pick up your stuff with you. There's nothing worse than going out for a nice ride through the woods and seeing the inner tube just like littered on the ground there. Chances are it might have just been forgotten, but come on, let that be a lesson and let's all take our rubbish with us. There's also plenty of options for those that want to continue using inner tubes but without using a traditional butyl tube. Uh, in particular, you can get the posh inner tubes, Schwabe make them and Tubalito make them. And they're made from TPU, which is thermoplastic urethane, a completely different material in the way it's manufactured and what it offers. Now, one of the things it offers is an extremely light inner tube, like frighteningly light. It's so light, in fact, it's even lighter than running a tubeless setup. Yes, you can still split them. Yes, you can still puncture them, but if you're looking for a super tech inner tube and you want to go the super light method, that is the way that you should do it. Now, if you like the idea of self-sealing punctures, but you don't want to commit to going tubeless, you can get dedicated inner tubes for this. Uh, Slime make them, for example, and it has a special style sealant on the inside. It's not the same as tire sealant, so you couldn't use tire sealant to the same effect. Uh, but they're rumored to be quite good. I've never tried them myself, uh, but I have tried uh, Muckoff make a sealant you can put in your regular inner tubes. You don't have to have a dedicated inner tube, but you do need an inner tube that has got a removable valve core, and then you can put some of this sealer inside, specifically designed to use on a butyl tube. Uh, and there you go, we have a similar effect to what tubeless tires can offer and the fact that they're gonna seal up small holes from things like thorns out on the trail, and just do a little bit more to keep you in the saddle. Not a bad thing. And if you really like your tech, you can get smart inner tubes now that have NFC chips inside. Uh, this one from Tubalito has an NFC chip, so it's a near field communication. Communicates wirelessly with an app on your phone. It has no battery as part of it. It is just a chip, kind of like a SIM card, I guess. Uh, and it stores information, in this case, about your tire pressures. So it stores very accurate information that you can access from an app on your phone, see what your tire pressure is doing, regardless of what pump you're using to inflate it with. You get a dead accurate reading. So if that tickles your fancy, you can go that way as well. Now, once you've completely knackered a tube or you have damaged a valve, what do you do with those tubes? Uh, well, your best bet is to try and recycle them in any way that you can, um, or you can repurpose them yourself at home. There's loads of things you can do. Uh, you can wrap your chain stay and your seat stays on your bike to silence them from chain slap. You can cover your down tube, uh, protect the paintwork if you're doing, for example, riding somewhere here like Bike Park Wales that has loads of small flying rocks when you're riding that threaten to chip your paintwork. You can even make little mud flaps uh, that work kind of in a way, it's like a little mud fender. They were really popular on the downhill scene a few years back before the big plastic style fenders came in. But the fact is you can make them for free from inner tubes you have lying around at home. If you've got an old chain lock, you can give it an inner tube sheath so you protect the paintwork on your bike that you're locking up. There literally are dozens and dozens of things that you can do with old inner tubes. You can even get creative and make a belt, a tool wallet, or even a wallet to put your cash in it uh, if you're feeling creative. It's a pretty resourceful material to reuse, so I would urge you to try and reuse it if you can. So the irony of coming to Bike Park Wales with inner tubes in is I've suffered a puncture so far. But I've just been sessioning Rimdinger. By the name of it, you think, pretty good place to uh, get a pinch puncher. And I'm hearing the rims literally something out, bottoming out, whatever you want to call it, the whole way through. Expect him to look like a Pac-Man. Nothing. Um, the bike is 125 mil travel, 130 mil travel running trail spec tires. They do have a little insert on the sidewalls to aid against exactly this. And I can only think that it's kind of testament to both the fact it's a light bike and you ride it light accordingly. And the tires is pretty good tech because I'm hitting just about every bad edge through there and nothing. Don't get me wrong, it's not the roughest trail in the world, but it's full of these little sort of three, four inch curbs, uh, weird angles, you always end up hooking up on a few of them. You'll always hear your front rim out or your rear coming through a trail like this. Just the sort of trail to get a pinch on. Nothing.
there she blows again. Can't say I'm surprised, to be fair. Pretty choppy through there. Hi, I'm a pinch puncher and I suck. <laughs> I've just ruined your day. Cool. That's what happens when you forget. Well, in fact, you take all of your tubers for pair kit, including rubber gloves out of your bag to do a video on inner tubes. Dear inner tubes, what can I say? I was wrong. When I cast you out my life so long ago, you left my tires feeling hollow. Today has shown me the rubber can be fun. And on it. What? Oh, f well, what can I say? Today didn't go like I thought it was going to. I thought at the beginning of the day, chucking tubes in, I was going to be literally doing that same thing all day long. I've had two pinch punctures on the rear. I'm amazed I didn't get one on the front because riding a lot of the rockier, red rated trails here at Bike Park Wales, uh, I think reflect the bike quite well. So, new proof reactor, 130, 125, trail spec tyres on here, not running crazy tyres. I'm kind of surprised because you could hear the rims all day long, really like rimming out and stuff, that I only had two pinch punctures. So, that's not as bad as I expected, and I was running fairly low pressures deliberately just to see what would happen. But you still won't catch me running inner tubes though because of the fact on my home terrain we have a big problem known as the thorn and the thorn literally is the Achilles heel of the inner tube. No matter what you do you're getting a slow puncture and they're the most infuriating for me. So no doubt the inner tube has shone pretty well here today at Bike Park Wales but um, I'm a tubeless fan uh, as I was at the beginning but I probably won't be muddying tubes as bad as I have been. Now what do you love? What do you use and why? Do you use tubeless? Do you use tubes? and um, let us know in the comments underneath. This was fun, actually. I'm a bit more of a fan of inner tubes than I have been for the last decade. So uh, see you in the next video. See you later.